in personality types, the Myers-Briggs system particularly, uh, our four-letter code, like for example, my type reference is ENFP. That's just a decoder ring to talk about the mental wiring of my mind, how I learn information, how I make decisions. It's the end of it, right? Like that's really what it shows me. And those processes I use are technically called cognitive functions, the way that I learn information, make decisions. And there's some qualitative nature to this that we're talking about on this episode and this series. And we're continuing along. Last week, we talked about the sensing cognitive functions. These are the functions preferred by SPs in the Myers-Briggs system or SJs in the Myers-Briggs system. Both extroverted sensing, we've nicknamed it sensation, or introverted sensing, we've nicknamed it memory. We unpacked those functions and talked about the analytic or holistic expression of each of those last week on the show. This week, I want to turn toward intuition, Antonia. That's right. Talk a little about the nuance of of these cognitive functions. Right. And I I do want to piggyback on what you just said. They are the functions preferred by SP and SJ types. Last week's word. Yes. Uh, Extroverted sensing sensation, introverted sensing or memory, but all of us use them. That's right. right. And that's a premise of this series. That's right. So there is a... um, the reason why we're doing this series, and I just want to, if you weren't able to listen to last week's, we're going to go over a couple, a couple of things that are relevant, even though we highly recommend watching or listening to last week's episode, because it gives quite a bit of context. Yeah. But there's a, there tends to be a one-sided definition of these Jungian functions that we pick up, particularly for functions that if you are new to type and you're just learning the car model that are not in our car, or if you are into type and um, you understand things a little bit more technical, what Dr. John Beebe calls our egocentonic functions, meaning that the functions that we identify with, so the first four, Mm -hmm. we have a tendency to the further down a function is in our cognitive function stack or the less quote unquote egocentonic it is, the more we have a tendency to see it very one-sidedly, we might get examples in our life or people who are of a certain best fit type, and we associate their usage of the function with the function itself, and we can be kind of inaccurate, actually. We can get the wrong impression of a function if we only see it from one angle. And what we're talking about in this series is that each of the functions can be married to what you just mentioned, an analytic or a holistic expression. Now, these have their own characteristics and qualities that follow them, meaning that as people, we have a tendency to have a preference for either an analytic energy or, or expression or a holistic energy or expression. And when we take the in general, character- in, in general. In our lives in general. Exactly. Yeah. And when we bring those energies and expressions and marry them to specific types, there's almost like an alchemical response that happens. And the function, the function takes on a slightly different quality or uh, it's a, it's really understanding the whole breadth and territory of every function and all the different ways that it can show up. Now, when a function is one of our preferred functions, right, particularly the first two, the driver or co-pilot in the car model or the dominant auxiliary in more technical terms, the more likely we are to have access to both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to mention if you're new and you're like, I'm already lost, Antonia, what are you talking about? <laughs> car models, functions, cognitive what? We understand this can be complex and deep sometimes, especially if you're new. Head over to personalityhacker.com, look up the car model. It's a great framework. It's a metaphor we use to explain how these cognitive functions show up for you and your personality. Everybody's personality has a little bit different way that these show up for them. Different functions show up. And that's just a great framework. We're talking about after you know how these show up for you, right? the qualitative nature of them. So we're not talking about the very functions themselves. We're talking about the qualitative nature of your functions and your personality. Right. So head over to personality.com and, and look at the car model for type. And the other thing you can also do is, I just want to mention this too, we're doing personality quests every week, which are a gathering of a tribe of like minds of people coming together live to experience the podcast. But directly afterwards, a membership program, we talk about the podcast. We unpack some learning, ask questions, discuss any things that were, were unclear for someone. 
And then we do some journal prompts and we give a challenge for that week for everyone to go try in their real, real life to make personality type come alive for us. Right. So it's visceral. It's real. It's not just theory. So if you're confused, those are two access points to get a little further into this without having to feel so overwhelmed with the material. Right. Now, if you're a little more advanced, you can hang with us here. And we're going to go deep into these uh, intuitive functions in just a moment as we explained more, Antonio, in the, in the general sense. But I want to give those reference points for people that might be new. Yeah, thank you. Um, we want to make sure that type is accessible to all. So it doesn't matter yeah. where you come in in your process. Yep. We want to make sure that it can come alive for you. So that said. So you were talking I? about, you were talking about <laughs> in the general, we have more of an assertive or analytic view of the world in, in our, just in our personhood, not even our personality type. Set that aside for a second or more of a receptive or holistic view of the world. Right. Oh, the I was talking the about the more like a, like if it's one of your preferred functions, Yeah, you probably can play both sides, Yeah, right? Especially your first or dominant function in particular, you probably have access to both the analytic version of the function and the holistic version of the function. So if you're listening and you're like, I do both, it's like, well, yeah, that's not uncommon. Yeah. And so um, we do have a tendency to go one direction or the other, though, because of our life experiences. And the nurture part of type is usually which, which side was the more acceptable to your environment, which one you got the more rewards for, which one felt the more like you could get away with it. Hmm. So in turn, in those terms, or maybe even which one was modeled for you in the people in your family or your life. So depending upon all of those circumstances, you probably like most people lean one side or the other. For some people, it's totally one-sided. It's the case for me. I tend to be very one-sidedly holistic. Yeah. And so if you are one, more one-sided, this information is really nice because it explains some of the traits that you can develop on the other side. And that is a version of one-sidedness when you just can, when you only can access either the analytic or the holistic version of a function. But there's also uh, opportunities not only for growth in your first two functions, but also opportunities for growth in other functions. So a part of what we've been encouraging people to do is as you hear the description of these functions in either an analytic expression or a holistic expression, yeah. try to figure out what lessons are on the table for you on the other side, or maybe tap into the energies of the other side a little bit. Yeah. So that said, we should probably do a relatively quick rundown of analytic versus holistic. We sure. did a pretty comprehensive rundown in the first podcast of this series, but we should probably do just kind of a quick compare contrast, yeah. just in case this is the first um, podcast that a person is listening to. And please feel free to go reference that one as well to get a, a more a deeper dive into the difference between the two. I think one of the best ways to do it is a compare and contrast. Just go back and forth qualitatively, maybe a few key words, key concepts mm -hmm. in this. So holistic, if we're talking about holistic energy coming to the world, it's more open-ended, seeking input, reflecting on data without filters, attentively being patient, almost waiting for things to emerge, where if you contrast that with more of an analytic style in the world, it's more goal-oriented, seeking a desired outcome, filtering out distractions, and uh, focus on things like drive, clarity, and confidence. Mm -hmm. So Again, this is a quality that gets applied to our mental processes. This quality can live outside of that. And people kind of embody this. I think I'm more of an assertive, analytic style person. Antonia, you would probably identify as a holistic, more receptive style person. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's just in a general sense, not even when we get to our cognitive functions. Right. Yeah, exactly. Are you trying to make things happen or are you sort of waiting for things to Allowing happen? Allowing them to emerge. Allowing yeah. them to emerge. Exactly. And the analytic is the make things happen and the holistic is allowing them to emerge. Exactly. Yeah. And so there's a couple other things in there. Uh, analytic styles tend to be more visual and visual spatial, particularly in their problem solving. Yeah. Holistic tend to be more auditory and mm -hmm. more narrative focused. Uh, analytics also are more literal thinkers, whereas holistics tend to be more figurative thinkers. Yeah. This is separate from functions, by the way, or type. This is just the energies of analytic and holistic. Um, analytic styles are more comfortable working in hierarchies and setting up leaderships. Yeah. Uh, holistic tend to be more egalitarian and want to just sort of cooperate with everybody. 
And there's more attention to word content, facts, rules, methods, numbers, deductions, labels, specific, you know, those kinds of specifics. Yeah. And then cutting out everything that is a distraction for an analytic. So analytic tends to just focus on the relevant information and is very keyed into those things and cutting all the other stuff out. It makes so much sense to me. Yeah. <laughs> what's, what's up with you holistic people? I know, right? Like take it all into account. Crazy. Just distraction after distraction. Right. And holistic thinkers <clears throat> tend to go the opposite direction. Yeah. They're keyed in on the whole thing, right? Regardless of whether or not it's considered relevant, because who knows what could be relevant, correct? Yeah. So uh, Dario, <clears throat> in his new book that we highly recommend picking up a copy, if you if it's not quite out yet, because we have early, you know, we, we have early chapters. We got the hookup. We got the hookup. Uh, the book is Decode Your Personality, 64 Brain-Based Subtypes to Go Beyond Myers-Briggs. And, uh, and that's a new book coming out and we highly recommend it. Dario is a dear friend. And he even, we realized when we read the chapter, he even gave us a nod. Yeah. Yeah. He talks about us in the book a little bit, which is fun. So, um, he gives the, he gives the, uh, illustration of a person watching a play, an analytic person would probably be more tuned into whoever's like the main character or what is going on on stage and the relevant actions. Whereas a holistic might be paying attention to what's going on stage, but also what's going on off stage and what's going on around them. <laughs> like the yeah. holistic is taking in the much bigger territory, but maybe not keyed into to things that should be keyed into. Yeah. Whereas an analytic might be overly keyed in and not paying attention to other pieces of information. We could also share focus as a, a way to understand this. Focused on a single point, maybe you're meditating and you're looking at a single point on the wall and your eyes are just fixated on that and you're removing all the peripheral and you're focused on that single point, or maybe you're doing maybe a Shambhala meditation where you're litting your eyes a little bit and you're more diffused and you're just taking a lot of into the peripheral, but you're not focused on anything singular thing in your life or what you're seeing. Yep. So that's the energy. Right. I think those two different styles of meditation are a great illustration yeah. of how the, how the focus works. Also, Dario didn't just develop this in isolation. This comes from both his work uh, also the work of Dr. Victor Galenko works with socionics in Europe, but he's also done a lot of things with subtypes. Some of the names that Dario uses for subtypes come from Victor with permission. Also tuning into Helen Fisher's work with neurotransmitters. So dopamine, testosterone, estrogen, uh, serotonin, these things. And then also Dario's brain imaging EEG scanning. Right. So he's mapping certain subtypes and certain ways that these holistic analytic energies come out in us watching the brain scans show up. So, you know, triangulating all this information and data is where we come up with these concepts and you can actually see them in brain scans in people. Yeah. So now we're going to take the analytic and holistic in general, these, these energies, these flavorings, and we're going to apply them to the cognitive functions inside of our personality. It's important to know that this is not a personality type. You're not stuck with one of these energies. This is an expression of your cognitive function. So you can express both and or one side. You can train yourself to express both sides. Much more flexibility here than maybe the hardwiring of your mind, you know, your cognitive function level. This is more about how you perform it out. Right. And so I think that's also important is there's some flexibility. And in fact, there's actually exercises and things you can do with like breath work to get into these different states. So as we apply this thinking of analytic holistic to two functions today, just keep that in mind. There's a lot of flexibility and variance inside your personality. And no matter where these functions fall for you, tune into the self and say, okay, which, which way does this function go for me? Does it lean more analytic? Does it lean more holistic? It'd be great information for you to know about yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, it's not pre-wired. Yep. All right. Unlike cognitive functions, which we suspect are pre, like our preference for functions is pre-wired, how they're showing up in these energies, it's not pre-wired. This is, this is probably the nurture aspect of type. Mm -hmm. That's what we suspect. And, uh, and yeah, there's a lot of opportunity for growth woven into here. <laughs>